This is an Nexus Special, Episode 66, Apple September Event 2019, on September 10th, 2019. And now I don't know if I want to wear a dinner plate on my wrist. This Nexus Special is hosted by Brian Mitchell and Ryan Ramperson. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash ns66. Good morning and welcome to the Steve Jobs Theater. Hey, uh, hey, Brian, was this uh, WWDC? Nah, not quite, but like, I mean, a few months off, right? Oh, a few months off, okay. It's nearby. Was was this the uh, legendary 13, I mean, 16-inch MacBook Pro event? Soon, I hope. No, not, not quite. Okay, uh, so that mu- that means that's all that's left is the um, kind of just iPhone event. Yeah, and actually, we got an iPad. And an iPad. The first hardware to be talked about at this event, or the first new hardware, was a new iPad. Okay, well, uh, that's good. Uh, but by, before that, I think there were even some services. And then after all of that nonsense, there's, there, there are some phones or something. Um, and a watch. Yeah, and a watch, and and then some just uh, you know overall updates, uh, and and so what 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 event is this? This is the uh, Apple September event for 2019. It's kind of the usual thing that Apple does, where they release phones and stuff. Yeah, it's it's uh, the start of the excitement, the the event that most people probably care about because uh, you know iPhone. For me, but... the start of the excitement is in June, but you know that's yeah. normal. I'm the same. It, well, this this event means that we can start using these new features in a that we heard about stable release pretty soon. Right. Okay. Well, let, let's get started and let's talk about um, the first thing. Uh, the first time ever, the the stream for this Apple event was on YouTube. That had never yes. happened before. That's yes, pretty cool. The first, it's usually on Apple's site. Um, I think at one point it had a million and a half people streaming this event at once. Yep. That's wild. I, I watch it on YouTube. My coworkers watch it on YouTube. It's great. Yeah, so you can watch the whole thing still on YouTube, of course, because it's just cached as a stream forever now. And, of course, we found this nice summary video that The Verge did not make. Apple made it instead. And that means it is the same. Yeah, it's good two-minute summary video of a lot of the features and things. Yep. So, yeah. Okay, so now we have to actually talk about the actual first thing. And we must begin with the Apple Arcade. Yes. So uh, this is that streaming service that has been talked about. When did they announce this? This summer? The spring? I believe that was announced formally at WWDC, right? Maybe? Or was they have it an event in March? I yeah, don't remember. Yeah, maybe it was in March even. I don't know. I don't pay attention to these silly Sometime gimmicks. in the last six months, but not in the last couple of months. How's that? That's very broad. <laughs> exactly. So um, they they demoed – what did they demo? A Frogger game from some company, maybe a couple other games. Um, looked looked quite nice. Um, but they gave us uh, – what we've all been wondering is a price and a release date. So it will be four ninety nine a month, and that's including family plans. And it will be released uh, next week on September 19th. Yeah, so for, um, for those at home, if you do the math, uh, it's about $60 a year. So if you have – kids or if you like playing any of the 100 plus games that will be available um and you like some variety occasionally that's probably a good deal like some of these games probably already cost ten dollars fifteen dollars so it's probably not unheard of to kind of just spend 60 and kind of just get it all at once and not only that is they're they're higher quality games they don't i don't think they have in-app purchases and they don't have ads and like coin things so they're they're high quality games that are more kind of i guess the traditional console style yeah which is what people generally seem to really like when they really get into a into a game well at least for the most part that's what we as enthusiasts like now i don't know if casual gamers care either way i mean you know you're not going to find candy crush in this probably so that'll be disappointing to somebody so yeah i'm i'm excited i might even try it there is a one month free trial i'll definitely give that a check um, and this works on iOS, iPadOS, macOS, and tvOS. Oh, so how does that work on macOS? Like, what do you do? Um, use your computer. and With what iOS games? I don't know. I don't know if they are all cross-platform or not. I'm not sure what the rules are. Okay. I guess we'll find out when it you know, launches but on I the 19th. But I think 19. at least some support it, yeah. Cool. 
So what's next, Brian? Well, in the same realm of services that cost money, uh, they announced the similar kind of things for Apple TV Plus. So this is their media streaming service. So they're creating original content. They've spent, I think, a couple billion dollars on stuff, and they've released a few previews uh, when they first announced this back in March, we think. And um, they released a new trailer called C, which is about a show that is in a few hundred years in the future where people have lost the ability to see, except then these two kids come around who can see, and mayhem continue, uh, like happens. So they showed a trailer for that. Looks kind of interesting. Um, the the big things to care about are that it is four ninety nine a month. So this is cheaper than Netflix or Amazon Prime or uh, even Disney's Disney Plus service and all the other stuff. Now Apple's library is much smaller, so that kind of makes sense. Um, they're also bundling it with a purchase of a new device starting today, where you get one year free. And so I, I uh, did inquire about that, and my sources have told me that it's not just a new Apple TV. It is any new Apple product device. So, yes. you know, if you buy a new iPhone, new iPad, you name it, you get it. Yeah, and uh, I think you can watch all this, of course, on your device, but also in a web browser. So it should be pretty uniform and universal. Uh, and that will all be available on November 1st. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I... Uh, Never really, I don't really watch TV and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I, I guess I'll be interested to see how this goes and if, how you know, how many people actually enter into the Apple ecosystem because they hear about some TV show. Yeah, we'll have to see. I know um, the trailer for one of their shows, they said during the keynote that it was one of the most viewed trailers for a TV show ever. Um, I think they have some big names coming in, so they certainly have high hopes for these shows that they're creating, That's and they good. look kind of interesting, so I'm excited. Mm-hmm. I'll check it out. Okay, so after that, we um, kind of begin the hardware, and as we mentioned earlier, it is now the newest iPad. It's a regular iPad, not a Pro, not an Air, just an iPad. Uh, according to my show notes, it is the seventh generation iPad. It's hard to believe that we're seven generations old now. Uh, well, the iPad's me- been around for nine years, so we're way more than seven generations. We had a, The iPad paused for a few years, remember? No, I'm, I, I can only remember the new iPad. Pretty sure that's the only one that ever came out. Ah, uh, the new iPad with the really slow but nice screen. Yeah. Um, so yeah. so uh, tell me more that about one. the seventh generation iPad. Well, it has a 10.2-inch display. Uh, it has a smart connector. still has Touch ID and a top bo- top and bottom bezel. Um, it still has that $329 price. And it has a wonderful bleeding-edge, super-fast A10 Fusion chip. Okay. So they're shipping it with uh, three-year-old hardware in some cases, but it's also much cheaper. And like a theme that they mentioned for the rest of the keynote, it is made with 100% recycled aluminum. Yes, Hooray. that is pretty cool. And it kind of makes sense that they uh, are putting the A10 in here because they um, basically have discontinued the iPhone 7 from the lineup, uh, which we'll get to in a little bit. But they probably have all those chips in the factories already there, so why not keep it around for a little bit longer and just keep printing iPads? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is, of course, you know, they're kind of bottom-of-the-line iPad, so it's going to be the cheaper one. Um, they still have the iPad Air that is a 10.5 inch display, so 0.3 inches. That's um, so but the, weird to me. The iPad Air is a, a tw- an A12 chip, so it's much faster. Um, both of these iPads support um, the smart keyboards, um, so that's new on this cheaper iPad. They have the Apple Pencil first generation compatibility. Uh, just so. for fun, uh, I will put in the show notes uh, an amusing link for everybody, which is the iPad comparison page. So then at the top of this page, if you click the CL models, you just get to see all the models that Apple has sold in recent time. Not, I, I don't know if that means forever, but at least in recent time. Re- recent time, yeah. And it's just so many different models. Like, it's just crazy. There's five that you can buy now. Yeah, yeah. Uh... I remember many years ago, like 10 years ago, not even 10 years, like seven years ago, Apple's lineup was so much more simple. Yes, by far. I mean, they're trying to 
fill every market, right? And, so. it, and it works. It's just that some of it overlaps pretty heavily, and the the marketing to fill those markets is somewhat hazy, I think. Yeah, and I have a hard time keeping up. Now, it might be me being a huge fanboy when I was in like junior high and high school that had way more time to focus on reading all about this, but it also, I think, is the product line was so much simpler. Yeah, so. for sure. So speaking of simple product lines, let's talk about the new watch. Yes. So the the watch leading into this event, the, there were um, some talk that would they even release a new watch or would they just maybe release new colors and a new case in a Series 4? But nope. They um, they announced the Apple Watch Series 5. So they kind of, um, before announcing the, the actual watch, they covered um, some progress they've made with health studies. So they talked about the... Um, electrocardiogram and how it's helped um, save lives for um, irregular heartbeats as well as um, yeah, I mean waking up with weird heart rhythms and things like that so um, they had a couple testimonials in video format of that um, and they announced three new studies that they're doing so they're doing an Apple hearing study Apple women's health study Apple heart and movement study so um, I think these are f- features that the watches have been collecting data on for a while, and iOS 13, I know, will have a new like hearing app for warning you if you're in an environment that's too loud. I saw that, and that um, is – so I'm reading here the, the copy text, and it tells you when things are getting a little loud. The new noise app alerts you when decibels rise to levels that can impact your hearing. I think that – okay, so let me tell you. Uh, my parents are getting a little bit older now. And they consistently have their volume on their te- TV upstairs up up to absurd levels very frequently. And I uh, I think this is a wonderful thing. Like people are ne- going to need this even more by the time we are their age. Because uh, you know what we all did. We used to listen to music far too loud. Uh, so it's – this is great. Yeah. I'm uh, – <laughs> it'll be interesting uh, having a watch in the EDM show – with watch os 6 because it's gonna be bad i'll well, so, be happy for my earplugs so basically sure. yeah so basically it's gonna say why aren't you wearing earplugs i hope there's an option saying yes mom i'm wearing earplugs <laughs> yes siri yeah yeah there we go so um i think there's there's more to come and um that's exciting that apple's kind of public and asking for help from people mm-hmm. so let's so, get to the headlining feature of the watch you ready for yes. it? Ready? Ready? I'm, I'm it's ready. The best, best feature ever. Always on Retina display on the watch. Yeah. So Woo! this is this has been like the feature of an Apple Watch after cellular and it getting a little faster. To be people... honest, in my opinion, this sure. is a much more important and headlining feature than cellular because this improves the usability of the watch to be equal and equivalent to a regular watch. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. Um, and this is kind of what pushed it over the line. I, I did order one today. Um, so I have a series three with cellular that I will be, uh, giving to my dad on loan for a few years. Um, and instead I bought a series five, of course, with no cellular cause pff, I'm not paying $15 a month for a feature I don't use. Oh, but, um, yeah, this always on retina display. They said it's a LTPO, which is a low temperature and oxide display. Uh, I've never it, heard of this. Me neither. But they said it allows you to change the frame rate dynamically much lower. So it can go from 60 hertz, which is kind of normal use, down to 1 hertz. So, or 1, yeah, 1 hertz. It's not 1 hertz. That doesn't sound right. So That doesn't sound right, but, you know, maybe it's possible. Who knows? So uh, they, they demoed a few through kind of screenshots and short little videos a few things that looks like they change when it's not in kind of active display mode. So instead of, you know, showing a workout and having all the milliseconds being on screen, you know, you have to have your screen refreshing 60 times a second to animate and do the, the time scaling of time just increasing. So they switched to more like one second increment kind of stuff to slow down the frame rate and use less power. looks like they kind of lower the brightness a bit too. They have a new display driver, ambient light sensor, yep. and some other display tech to help with this. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, other watches have done this already, so like Apple is certainly not the first to have an always-on watch, but the Android and Tizen and other OEM versions of this are certainly not as comprehensive because the complication system in uh, watchOS is so much more robust. Uh, I think what's interesting about this is that it came to the watch first. In some ways, it makes sense because they're trying a new tech, new screen tape maybe, or whatever, whatever that LTPO means. Uh, so hopefully we get to see this in the iPhone someday, uh, because man, I sure do love ambient display. Yeah, that would be really fun to see. I'm excited to try it out on the watch that I'll be getting. Um, so you'll be able to hear more in a bit, probably on a second opinion at some point. Perfect. We'll have a whole watch review segment because I have my recently acquired Samsung watch to review still as well. Ooh, nice. I'm looking forward to that. So what else is new here in the watch? So they they not they didn't just add one new hardware feature but two. So they added a new compass. Now this is a a chip that has been in the iPhones for I don't know since iPhone 3G, maybe 3GS. Yeah. And uh, it allows you to do things like show your heading in maps, or they have a new com- uh, compass app which shows things like elevation and heading, and uh, they have a new compass complication that you can put on your watch face. So. If that's the thing that you like, there you go. Um, I personally am a fan of knowing my elevation at any point. I know that's that's not a compass thing. I think that's a Jeep. Well, that's a like a barometer. Yeah, right. Because it's pre- which well, is already in the phone at least. Is it no, pressure and, based? How does that work? Yeah, actually, yeah. The changes. Apple Watch Series Three added a barometer to do like how many flights of stairs you've gone up because it uses the air pressure difference plus accelerometer stuff to know I oh they're going sense. upstairs mm. i don't know yeah so that's pretty cool uh let's see here some of the other features are international emergency calling on the cellular models of course that's also always good don't yep. want to get run over by a bus and not be able to call for help uh Definitely. as as we mentioned elsewhere in this episode already uh 100 recycled aluminium for the uh, ives in the room um <laughs> So in addition to aluminium, we have stainless steel, ceramic, and a new option. What is it? Titanium. I don't know how to say that in a funny way, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. So I think the ceramic and the titanium options are called Apple Watch Editions again. Oh, of so course So the name are. has returned. Uh, I couldn't figure out... Okay, here, let me let me go to this website. You keep talking and I'll keep clicking. All right. So something that I saw on Twitter later on, and um, we you could probably verify this yourself if you go to the Apple pages about it, but I haven't done that yet, but pff, Twitter is fine. Um, all of the Apple Watches, except for the aluminum, include cellular. So there's no GPS or cellular option for everything. Only aluminum lets you choose. So um, the aluminum ones start at $399, um, and the stainless steel, I think, starts at like 700 or something like that. And those all include cellular, so that's kind of unique. Okay, so this this just in. So apparently, the ceramic case costs twelve ninety nine. Yep. And the titanium case costs eight ninety nine. And then there's a thirteen ninety nine uh, ceramic with leather loop. So that's expensive, but you can buy now. Yeah, I think that's the same price that ceramic was two or three years ago when they first released it. So yeah, it's uh, definitely the more fancy watch. They're much stronger materials, but also, you know, I think like ceramic is more prone to shattering, but yeah. it's way stronger than steel or aluminum. I'd like to, uh, I don't want one of these uh, expensive watches, but I'd love to try one just to f- see what ceramic feels like. I don't know what that really is. So It's very smooth. Yeah, I think I saw one once or saw photos or a video i don't know yeah they're 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 cool they're very white like very, very pure white you know like a like a dinner plate yeah ceramic. yeah and uh yeah I, I i just don't know if i want to wear a dinner plate on my wrist though <laughs> that's that's it's a fair option yeah um let's see they also announced new um hermes bands um in addition to probably new bands that they make themselves um let's see. Yeah, so they start at 399, sailor starts at 499. That's for the 40 millimeter. The 44 is 
I think $30 more, $50 more, something like that. And those are available today. So I bought mine at work today, less than two and a half hours after hearing about it. Less than two hours. It was like two o'clock, maybe. And I think they'll be in stores next week for people to look at in person. Yep. And they are released on Friday the 20th. So I will be picking mine up at the Apple Store in Uptown at 10 a.m. if anyone wants to meet me there. Very nice. Uh, but don't mean him there to mug him. Uh, yes, so, thank you. <laughs> uh, you can buy the Series 3, not the Series 4, because reasons, the Series 3, for only one ninety nine. Now, is the Series 4 still for sale? I have no idea. I don't understand gonna... how to use this Apple website, so I can't tell you. I'm, I let's, uh, let's keep talking and stall for time while we check. Okay, what well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the slug to 4, and it's this page not found, so I'm going to assume that it's not. Um. Yeah, While we're like stalling, five. They still have the, the Nike, the Nike version, um, and that's new because that's Series Five as well. That's really just a, a custom face plus the, the extra band. Yeah, I don't think they. Yep, four is gone. Yeah, weird. Numbers are strange. Yeah, for I, Apple. My guess is the four is still much more expensive for them to make because it's got the curved screen and things. Right. And so the three is like cheaper. The, the cheaper one, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So let's talk about the uh, kind of the headlining features of this keynote, which are the iPhones, of course. Yes. Um, so let's begin with the uh, simplest iPhone possible, the iPhone 11. 11, yes. We're, we're back from Roman numerals to normal standard, uh, are these Latin num- No, Arabic numbers? Yes, I believe that's what we call them here. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. No one's going to call it an X anymore or an XS. No. It's. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm 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 going to love uh, when people call this the iPhone one one. <laughs> That's true. I already saw a parody video on YouTube that just added dots below the ones and just was calling it iPhone as oh my exclamation gosh. marks. Yes, I can see that. Okay, so this is an interesting thing because. Um, I wouldn't say that this phone's shape is radically different in any way to the previous shapes, but instead of just having the same number, like, you know, 10, 10S, 10T, I don't know, whatever, uh, this has a whole new number. So this apparently merited going to a whole new naming set, Uh, and this is really just the 10R a generation later. It's the the same size of phone. It's got a six point one inch screen. Um, it uh, is not OLED. Um, there is no three D touch. So kind of the same stuff as the ten R, um, but it does come in more colors. That uh, red color is beautiful. My, product my red to... on launch. I don't think they've done a product red in the fall in a long time. Yes, That's I usually I like... do. I do agree. I, I think they have done. I think they did it a while ago for one of the older phones, but not in a long time. The I believe the 10R comes in product red now. They usually yeah. do that in like March or April, the right. year after. It's a it's a model bump, so they they can get some quick sales. Yeah, right at the end of the quarter, right before earnings. Um, so uh, there are some new features. You know, it is a new iPhone, and you know, despite being a 10R generation later you know it's still there's some new stuff so there's there's new spatial audio and dolby at most because there are speakers everywhere in this phone or just what two or three probably two and some like machine learning audio processing thing yeah who knows uh so last year the 10r had one camera this year it has a new wide camera so just, you know, they're updated kind of the the one camera they had, they updated it, right? Yeah. It's new. It's standard kind of wide frame, as in it's not teles- telescopic like the 10s and 10s Max had as the second camera. So it has kind of yeah. the same standard camera plus an ultra-wide camera that lets you see up to 120 degrees. Uh, so I have a phone here. It's called the <laughs> Galaxy, a Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, uh, and it has a wide angle camera lens on it. I don't know what its um, you know degrees are, field of vision, but I use this camera mode significantly frequently now because it is just so useful to be able to capture basically double in frame. Just it's yeah. just wonderful. That's great to hear. I 
I'm excited to get a wide, an ultra wide camera in a year from now when I buy whatever iPhone they release in a year from now. Well, I mean, in a year from now, they'll have four cameras. That's probably true. I saw a mock-up <laughs> where someone said, uh, you know, they they put cameras across the entire back face of an entire iPhone. Yep, you got so, it. This camera bump, it's actually two layers tall. So there's, uh, you know, on the existing iPhone, it kind of has a, or the, I guess the current generation, it kind of has a bump. I guess in the 10R, it has a bump around the, the camera lens. Yep. So that's cool. On the 10S, 10S Max, it, it's uh, around both cameras and there's kind of one glass cover on top of both lenses. Yep. But this is now, there's a square and in the square are two independently separated lenses that have bumps on their own. Right. It's it's so. strange design. It, and to be honest, uh, I'm looking here at the Apple website about, you know, all this stuff. Uh, it looks worse, probably the worst on the, well, on the lighter colors. Um, yeah, all, all the shadows kind of morph yeah, in. Yeah, and... it's really weird. Uh, okay, so that's cool. So let's talk about some more stuff. Um, semantic uh, rendering for lighting of subjects. That's pretty cool. Got to make sure, sure everybody looks good. Um, new HDR. Multi-scale um, tone mapping, whatever that means. Same with it, semantic rendering. It, it has something to do with uh, making colors look good. Um, another cool gimmicky feature, though, kind of, it's called high-key mono portrait mode filter. Basically, it cuts you out of a background and makes you look cool in black and it white. It makes it look like you're, yeah, in black and white on like a white background drop for a like a professional portrait kind of thing allegedly that's what they said because it's a gimmick feature yeah yeah uh but what is not a gimmick feature potentially at least to be determined is the new night mode because a year ago with the um launch of the pixel 3 google launched a night mode and it kind of took everybody's breath away uh because in basically darkness Google somehow made an algorithm to make it pretty bright. And now everybody's doing it. So uh, this this new camera app that Apple's made here for this new set of phones uh, will just enable this automatically, and it does pretty cool stuff. It probably is doing what Google's doing, which is uh, taking multiple frames, multiple exposures. It's also probably using some of the uh, jitter from your natural hand movement and, you know, machine learning it all together and hoping it looks good yeah i think i saw some screenshots referring to like five second exposure you know you kind of have to hold your phone there for a little while for it to actually go in and stitch it all together yeah but yeah that'll be exciting to see i'm I'm really interested to see comparisons across all the smartphones samsung and google and apple and see where yeah. each one excels and falls off. And, you know, they all do something different. Like, I've been watching a lot of videos about this recently, and I I think, um, you know, one of the big things about the phones are the iPhones take really great video, uh, the Google phones take really great um, pictures, and the Samsung phones take really good, um, yeah, I don't know. I thought you were just going to say exist. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they do. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh 4K 60 frames per second on all the cameras with uh, additional dynamic range. It's always good. Um, modification to the shutter button to take a video now. So you, so you tap and then hold it. I don't yes, know. If you, that... if you yeah, if you hold down now, it'll start taking a video. I think it previously took a bunch of photos in quick succession. Like it a might burst? just yeah. I think it okay. might just start a video now. But maybe if you tap and hold, I maybe it's only in vertical. I'm not really sure they had a little demo i kind of wasn't paying attention for that yeah. part but so, some cool new feature hooray uh, that's actually a better more more ergonomic more useful to people like you can take a video with the shutter button you can take a yeah, yeah. uh 36 percent better uh flash always nice uh as we mentioned earlier a new camera app which has been redesigned to have some more features and some better layout you and mentioned phil schiller even called out that it has the new typeface in it called SF Camera, SF that, being San Francisco. That 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 is enti- the entirety of Phil's contribution to this event. Uh, <laughs> He's got one more good quote later on, which we'll talk about later. But, okay, so yeah. there was two things then. Uh, so there's a new front camera, and we'll talk about more of this later too. 
Uh, 12 megapixel true depth camera, so that's always good. I think um, the previous ones were like 8 megapixels. They were s- yeah. they were s- uh, smaller sensor size. So another more more data. Uh, and so they have 4K 30 with XDR. So that's their extreme dynamic range, where the, the back-facing ones have 60 frames per second at 4K with the XDR. And the front one can do 30, or without the crazy dynamic range, you can do 60. Uh, and, and and Brian, just so you know, that, that is pronounced 10DR. 10DR. I, <laughs> mm, I see. Uh, and so there's also a new kind of gimmicky feature, but it's also kind of cool in my opinion, which is the slow-mo selfie or the slow fee. I think that is going to be a meme over the next few days. Oh, people well, saying slow fee. A couple of years. Yeah. Um, I think it's cool. Uh, you know, it's a it's something. Yeah, that's some demos of like someone hair, a hair dryer and like moving their head around kind of thing. That was kind of fun to see. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. And so, of course, this is a new iPhone, and that means it has a new chip, which is the A13 Bionic, or yes. something like that. So uh, they covered some in the iPhone 11 section. Um, they didn't say tons about it, but it's the fastest CPU in a smartphone ever and the fastest GPU in a smartphone ever, and it's more power efficient. Um, it lets the iPhone 11 have one hour better battery life than the 10R. So that's kind of nice. So I was really impressed with that. I um, uh, Down below in our next section, we have an even more impressive claim about battery life, and it's just beautiful and amazing and uh, if true, will basically break the world. We'll see. Yeah, this is going to really be a strong point for Apple because the iPhones have have been good at battery life, pretty good. I think their their low power stuff is better than Androids, but their batteries are smaller in capacity. Right. So there's some trade offs there. If you're a heavy heavy user of your phone, your iPhone's not going to last as long traditionally. But yeah. So we got uh, faster Face ID. Um, did they say what they did to it, or I don't know. Um, it's just new. I, I don't know. It, they just said faster. It could just be the A13 being better. Yeah. Um, they uh, talked about some like neural engine stuff, so maybe. Yeah, that. they have a whole dedicated segment of the chip for it. Yep. Uh, new Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi six, which basically nobody can use right now because nobody has routers for that. So come back in a year. But the iPhone will support it. Woohoo, I guess. Uh, Water resistance up to 2 meters for up to 30 minutes, which means it is IP68, which is uh, what is known as uh, pretty good. Yeah, I think they mentioned, like, dustproof stuff, too. I don't know if they've claimed dustproof before, but now they have. Yeah. Or dust resistant, sorry. Not proof. Right. Okay, so now, Brian, now, normally I would say, uh, surely that means this product, I mean, it had a bunch of updates, and it's a year later, so it probably went up $50 in price. So last year, this was a $749 product. This year, it should surely cost $799 flat. Tell me if that is true. That is false. You hear we have a recession coming, right? Oh. They, they preemptively lowered the price. Wow, or there's a tariff. Wait, that's not how that works? Huh. That or or make- someone's... Uh, like total revenue is, has dropped significantly for iPhone. Hmm. Oh, and, and so what I'm hearing is if you make cheaper products, pe- more people can buy them. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so when I saw this price, I was shocked and so pleased because this is within my realm of auto buy, basically, which is really bad. Don't quote me on that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, like what a what a what a what a thing to, for an Apple product that's good to get cheaper. Yeah. Uh, Six ninety nine, that's yeah, pretty good. It that's, is pretty good. Um, yeah, it's only fifty dollars, but but it's a uh, it it's looks a barrier. Like a, yeah, it's a mental barrier being sub seven hundred. So so in the old days, there used to be you know the iPhones were four five ninety nine, six ninety nine, seven ninety nine, and that it's a it this is kind of the standard iPhone price in my opinion. This is no longer in the modern flagship tier, which is. You know, basically eight fifty up. This is now just a standard phone price, which is still horrible. I everybody should understand that we agree with that, but this is much better than it used to be. Yeah. Now keep in mind when the smartphone pricing kind of started, it was years ago. So inflation has has hit a little bit, and you know the prices have gone up a bit. But yeah, this is this is more 
I think it's, you know, it's been a year or two since Apple really bumped the prices on the iPhone. So people have kind of gotten used to this now. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, the iPhone 11 was pretty good. Now, how do, how do you make, um, like, what do you do after the 11? Do you just do you also release the iPhone 12? <laughs> S- no. Similar to the the 8 and the 10 being released at the same time? Exactly. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm still no. waiting for a nine. Nope, can't have that. Maybe next year. So no, they didn't release an iPhone 12. They released the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max. Hmm. hmm. S to Pro. Yeah. So what do they call the next one? Uh, 11s Pro Max. Okay, so it's it'd be funny if Who the knows? next one. It's the, you know they always said they wanted to cater to pros, so now it's the uh, iPhone 11 pros um yeah <laughs> yes i so, i kind of hope they just do 12 13 14 that would make way too much sense yeah so we'll new see. colors um an awful green color i really don't know what the color team was thinking this year it's like midnight green it's like camo green it's just disgusting i i wonder if they were mixing paint and like accidentally made this color really cheaply and they're like well we you have know, it all. Heck, let's just ship it. I I don't <laughs> understand. Like, who was asking for this awful color? Uh, okay, fine. This color is the worst color I've ever seen. In addition to that color, they have space gray, uh, white, which is really silver, and then they have gold, which is sort of not really a rose gold, but it's more of a gold gold. Eh. That new in between. Yeah. When they when they still had gold and rose gold. This is it's in between that. The only one that I can approve of, okay, the only two that I can approve of are the black and the white ones. I uh, hope that they give you another color sometime because, man, those options aren't very attractive. Product Red will come probably March, right? Uh, hopefully. Okay, so uh, any screen change sizes? Same screen sizes. It's still the 6.5 for the Max and the 5.8 for the normal Pro. That's good. Uh, so how about um, – what what's going on with the display, Brian? Well, it's a brand-new OLED panel. They call it the Super Retina XDR display. Uh, again, they referenced... that's the 10DR. Sorry, Super Retina 10DR display. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, they they were um, quoting a few things that they learned from the, the upcoming Mac Pro XDR display. Um, but uh, I think that's kind of where they borrowed some of the naming from. Uh, but this has a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio, 1,200 nits, which I think is pretty deal. good for OLED. That's pretty close to the normal um, Super Retina display on the iPhone 11. It's 15% more energy efficient. It supports Display P3 color profile. It has that spatial sound and Dolby Atmos and uh, no 3D touch. It's gone. Not a big loss, to be honest. Yeah, I, I use it a bit, but... They're kind of tap to hold. That haptic engine is so good that provides enough feedback. I think it's, it's cool, but it, I mean, it's a feature that's just too hard for people to figure out how to use. And the difference when you have a 3D touch display, the difference between a long press and a light 3D touch press is very difficult. Right. It's, and can you imagine how to explain yeah. that to a normal person? That's just impossible. Yeah, I have I have a hard time like dragging and moving things around on my iPhone, just like. I want to listen to this podcast next. So when I'm dragging a podcast in Overcast, I mess up all the time. No. Nope. So. So yeah. with your new Pro phone, maybe you think you're going to get a, an A13 plus Bionic chip. But no, no, you're not. You're going to get the same chip as everybody else, an A13 Bionic chip. Which I think is smart. It's it fine. Keeps everyone's phone, it, it, I mean, it makes the, the, the normal 11 more advantageous. But it means your phone's going to last a lot longer because yep. you're buying the best that you can, like, speed-wise. So but they, they they took this time to go into more detail about the next chip. Yeah, and so we'll, we'll touch on a few of these things. So uh, new machine learning accelerators. So basically it's like an ASIC but just dedicated to machine learning. And it's uh, six times faster for matrix multiplication, which, as you might have heard, is what machine learning is. It's just a bunch of matrices. Um, one trillion ops per second, which is a uh, pretty fast uh, machine learning controller for all of that machine learning stuff. Eight point five billion transistors. I, oof, it's a lot. It's a lot. 
It's the most efficient chip yet, which we'll talk about later again. Uh, they talked about, for some reason, like somebody got on stage by accident probably and talked about some really technical needlessly stuff, like the voltage domains and the clock domains. Well, this was, uh, I think, a director or manager of like the the chip division at Apple. Yeah. And so it was, it was interesting, interesting to hear about. I don't think we've had that kind of a talk from Apple in quite a while. No, no like we have Mac not. Mac Pro maybe touched on that, but I, I remember back to the, the wonderful, like, uh, you know, G4, G5 days where they just went, dove straight into like, you know, tech stuff and the, like Phil Schiller and Steve Jobs would just stubble, stumble over all the tech words. Those yeah. Those the days. Uh, so the last time I heard anybody talk about this kind of stuff in a big presentation was from uh, Ryzen, the Ryzen 2 launch or the Ryzen 1 launch from AMD, where they talked about all of their actual CPU stuff. And then here we have Apple at a kind of generic keynote talking about it. That's pretty weird. Yeah. and But I'm, I'm sure the uh, the hardware chip people are very happy for it. So I'm pretty happy for it. So, in addition to all of that, uh, CPU, GPU, and the neural engine are up to 20% faster and 40% lower power, which contributes to the most efficient chip yet, which will contribute to what we talk about in just a little while. But before then, let's talk about what you can see with the cameras. Yes, so uh, the the Pro and Pro Max have the... Uh, standard wide and telephoto cameras that the 10s and 10x 10s max had but they also have the ultra wide like the iphone 11 has um, this lets you combine them together to get four times optical zoom range from the ultra wide to the telephoto um, and that's they did some examples of comparing what you can see in the same like standing in the same position and it's it's pretty impressive um, i've kind of gotten into photography just on my phone so i haven't really had optical zooms and so when you you hear like okay 2x yeah that's something but when you get to 4x it's very noticeable yeah i I, i'm looking forward to seeing that sort of uh permeate the android space i'm not looking forward to however having four camera modules in the back of my next phone but it's gonna happen yeah well when you can't like physically move mirror or lenses in a smartphone you just have to add more stuff onto it yeah i wonder if will we ever get a smartphone camera that just has like a long tube on the back that no. sits parallel to the like the height nope. and you, when you want to take a photo you just like turn it and viewfinder it you know that sounds horrible let's not do that like a telescope uh yeah, that's, so, that's, so that's tell awful. me about this new feature called deep fusion so this is a feature coming in a software update later this fall um it's it's kind of it looks like it just creates the best image that it can through a bunch of computational photography and neural engine stuff. So it it basically takes nine images before pressing the shutter button, and then when you press the shutter button, it takes one longer exposure photo, and then the neural engine kind of goes through all these images and looks for the sharpest and most exposed or best exposed parts of each image, and then stitches it together. And this is the this is the other Phil Schiller quote saying, "Computational photography, mad science." Sounds like him. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this will, this will be fun to see. It's. I feel like they could have called this smart HDR, but like right. smarter HDR. But Deep Fusion, I guess, works too. Well, I mean, it would have been smart HDR X. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or ten. Ten. Right. Ten X. Ten X. There you go. Uh, so they also mentioned that there's a uh, new faster cellular, which I think is funny because it's not actually 5G, but they had to say it because that's coming next year. Yeah. It's just more LTE stuff. The, you know, kind of the later, later generation that they, I think they've added faster cellular almost to every iPhone the right. last couple of years. Totally in various, makes sense. Various ways. Uh, they made a big deal about their new back glass which is the best glass ever to ever be made. Yeah, it's yeah. good glass. It's stronger. Sounds um, pretty cool. Yeah, so they had this, uh, they on, had a slide of like features in the iPhone, like you know they do for software versions and hardware. They mentioned a U1 chip. They didn't talk about it at all, and I don't think there are many references to it on the website. But it's, it's, uh, 
an Apple designed chip that called U1 that uses ultra wideband technology for spatial awareness. So it allows an iPhone 11 Pro to precisely locate other U1 equipped Apple devices. Um, this is I'm reading from their thing. It's like adding another sense to iPhone, and it's going to lead to amazing new capabilities. Now, yeah. If, so uh, yeah. do you do you recall uh, the technology that um, was going to be involved in the sort of new iPhone tracking system that they talked about at WWDC? Um, where they were going to basically yeah. piggyback on other iPhones nearby, even if yours was like not off, but like all of the sensors were off. My guess is this is that. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I think they'll use some Bluetooth stuff for older devices, but for newer ones, this is probably way more power efficient because it doesn't have to spin up Bluetooth and that. I would that love kind of to stuff, know but... what ultra wideband actually means. Uh, it can't mean Bluetooth, but what does it mean? Yeah, we'll see. I'm yeah. not sure. Uh, um, so I'm, I'm going to put a link here to the Verge article about uh, the U1 chip. So if anybody's interested, feel free to read that. And uh, also in the show notes is a, a link from a guy named Tom uh, Erdman, who I think works at Apple. Um, he says, today we announced uh, U1. I've been working on U1 for a long time, and I'm so excited for people to experience the first feature that it supports a magical enhanced airdrop flow where you can select someone to share just by pointing at them. Now, there's some reading between the lines here. Uh, first feature that it supports, and in the Apple quote, it's going to lead to amazing new capabilities. Um, there's some talk on Twitter about a feature that was maybe pulled from this keynote pretty last minute, or maybe not last minute, but recently, um, and some leaks in the iOS 13 beta as well, where, you know, you know the company Tile? Yep. So that, but for Apple, and it'll use maybe this U1 kind of ultra wideband things and hop into the new Find My app. So you can see not only like your friends, like the what was in Find My Friends or your devices, like what was in Find My iPhone, but also any of these um, beacons. Yeah, beacons. And I think that would probably communicate over this chip. That's pretty cool. Uh, we'll we'll have to see. I I, I was um, extremely intrigued by the uh, WWDC discussion on, you know, the the privacy angle of doing like where's my iPhone and where are my friends. I think it's super cool tech. Uh, I'm 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 really surprised to hear that it's actually a dedicated chip. So we'll just have to see how this all works once these phones come out. Can you can you wait for all the jokes in a year or two from now when they release the U two? No. Nah. Just, I mean, sure, as long as they don't push any more music to anybody's more anybody else's phones <laughs> or awkward index finger pointing. Uh, you know, and, and you know what's <laughs> weird is that would have been the perfect time to use the watch. Like, oh, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, on the phones, we have we have just have to focus a little bit more on the phones. So allegedly, better battery life on the 11 Pro, four hours longer than the 10s. Yeah, that's wild. I think that 40% lower power is probably pretty serious and like towards the sides of 40%. I mean, um, it's just it's just amazing. Like I can't imagine year over year getting four extra hours on a phone. Uh I guess we'll just find out if that's actually true. I mean, that could just be a claim and that could be you know, it could be very very extremely person to person, but if that is a general 4 hours, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I, now the Tennis Max had like a couple hours more battery life than the 10s, so I feel like the 11 Pro Max would maybe even have like five hours more than the 10s Max. Right. Like that's wild. Yep. I want that. It is pretty pretty good. I'd recommend yeah. it. Uh, and again, faster Face ID, uh, better wide angle support. Nothing too exciting there. Okay, so now Brian. As a, as Apple tradition, this phone has been a thousand dollars for two years now. Did they drop the price on this one? Nope. No. It is the same. Darn. Yep. But if you think about it, adjusted for inflation, it's actually cheaper. Oh, okay. So you gotta have the loophole to make it cheaper. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So the the Pro is nine ninety nine, and the Pro Max is ten ninety nine. So, and that's also available September twentieth, like the iPhone eleven. Yes, and I believe, according to my uh, technical documentation, the pre-orders start on the 13th. Yeah, and the pre-orders are at 5 a.m. Pacific versus the last, like, forever 
forever and ever has been midnight Pacific, yeah. which means everyone has to wake up in the middle of the night. But now it's just get up early and you can order. It's probably be better because when the web, when the server is catching fire, somebody will be awake to put them out. I think uh, Marco Arment had a, a tweet where he was like, "New iPhone, cool. New new watch, cool. Pre-orders at at uh, five a.m. Pacific, like like in all caps. Yes, this is the feature we've all been waiting for." Something, it's funny because like that. you know hardware. Eh, we can get a new hardware anytime. Operational changes with an Apple. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a few more fun things. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, the iPhone XR from last year is reduced in price, still on the lineup, at just five ninety nine. So it's pretty so cool. It's down one hundred and fifty, and a hundred less than the iPhone eleven. So it's interesting because the 10R and the and the um, and the 11 are pretty comparable. Uh, you're not really gaining or losing too much on the display. Uh, obviously, the, there's a big camera difference and probably the CPU difference. Um, I think the biggest is like power difference, like how much more battery you're going to get in the 11. In theory, yes. And yeah. I, now, it, yeah. Apple didn't talk about how much percent faster the chips are. Well, they said up to 20. percent I yeah. guess. So, yeah, faster, but way better battery. Yep. So I guess if you were buying a phone and you had the choice between the 10R or the 11, I'd pick the 11, even though it's $100 more, but I feel like you should be able to save that in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, but if um, that wasn't enough, uh, the iPhone 8 is still around. Hooray. And it's it. this is... Totally going to be the NVNO phone from now on, the iPhone 8 and 8. They, they called it the Max then, right? iPhone 8 Max? Plus. Plus? That makes no sense. I'll be completely honest. I forgot they even made an 8 Plus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So it's going to be 449 yeah. and 549 from now on. And I suspect that next year will be the last year of the old model designs. So that's good. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you a bummer, though. Uh, there's still no small modern design phone yeah they're they're pretty large that you know the 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 smallest one pro is 5.8 yeah yeah so that's a bummer yeah i i have i know uh or i have a coworker who who bought an android partially because it was way cheaper but also because it was physically smaller i have yeah. a couple of, a couple other friends who also like have been iphone users but they never they didn't want a phone that big Yep, I, I I don't totally understand their pain, but I I can kind of get it. Yeah. So they finished off this keynote with a few updates from, um, uh, their head of retail, and talked about a few things like the Apple Watch experience, which lets you pairs bands and cases together. I think this is in store. There's also a cool feature on the Apple Store app, at least on the like the iOS app, maybe on their website too, where you can. Like choose and build a watch with uh, what case, what color, what size, with or without cellular, and then whichever band you want. And so you can kind of create a custom watch for what you want because there are literally thousands of combinations between all of the things that they sell right now. It's pretty cool. Uh, and then in addition to that, they are letting you trade in your old phone with credit towards a new phone. Yeah, so this seemed like it was worth, you know, 100, 150, maybe a little more than that. I don't know. And you could pay it off either like in one go or monthly uh, increments. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I was looking uh, at some of the rates for the, the trade ins or, you know, and like they're okay. Uh, they're not, they're certainly not doing anything that, that Samsung would be doing, giving you $600 for a new phone, for basically a, a previous gen phone. Um, so, for example, you can trade in uh, – let's see here. How does this computer work? So you can trade in an iPhone XS Max for $600. Hmm. So that's I guess – pretty good. You hmm. get half off basically. I guess that's fine. Yeah. No. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Apple Fifth Avenue store will be reopening on September 20th. Of course, that is the iPhone holiday. Yeah, uh, there's some photos I've seen on online of that glass cube was kind of unveiled earlier this week or last week, and that was uh, pretty pretty interesting to look at. Mm -hmm. It's like it's not clear glass; it's that like 
purple green yeah stuff so that you that can they see put it on cars and whatnot yeah it's quite cool and Check then it finally, out if you're in Manhattan. finally we have ios 13 and 13.1 yes 13 will be available on september 19th to only iphones ipads won't get it um so just iphones on the 19th uh, and then on september 30th so this is after those iPhones are out for 10 days, iOS 13.1 will be available, and that will be available on iPad for the first time, and all of iPhones, of course. I also think I saw that WatchOS 6 will be released probably at the same time as iOS 13, but will only work on the iPhone, on the Apple Watch Series 3 and 4 and, and new 5, um, and that the Series 1 and 2 will get WatchOS 6 support um, not too long after. I, I can't imagine the technical uh, internal catastrophe that caused the phones and then the iPads to get different release cycles for the OS. Sounds horrible. Yeah, I feel bad I, for them. They did a big rollback in the iOS 13 betas a few weeks ago where they like took out a ton of features because they then made an iOS 13.1 beta. Oh. And so it, it sounds like things weren't quite stable. Um, I know they rolled back all the iCloud changes that they're going to do. Um, and that's coming in iOS 13.1 or even later. So, and I think macOS Catalina is coming in October, which also has had some stability issues, yep. um, or quality issues. So, yeah, they're they're just releasing iPhones for now, and then that is more okay. later. Yeah. So uh, this was a pretty cool event. Uh, you know, initially I thought it was going to be kind of a boring event, like I wasn't super interested. Uh, and the, the, the thing that surprised me most is how much I like the position in which the iPhone 11 is in now. Yeah, it's a really solid phone. Um, I think last year, like, that, the t- iPhone XR was, like, super capable phone. I had a hard time recommending the XS to everyone. Like, for the most part, I recommended the XR. Unless you're really into phone photography or want the latest and greatest thing. And I think the 11 kind of continues that. So, you know, eventually what's going to happen is the the watch always on display tech is going to come to the phone in some form or another. Uh, My Samsung phone has the ambient always on display, and it is luxurious to be able to just look at the phone from anywhere while it's sitting on the table and just see that it is 946 as we record this episode and that I have four notifications. It's super cool to have that capability, and I think that'll come to the phone. And so, to me, the biggest differentiator between the two models, like, you know, Pro and not Pro, like, sure, there's the camera, but the biggest difference is the screen. And I I love AMOLED. Uh, LCD is so weird to me now. And one day, when uh, Always on Display is available for the phone, uh, that'll be the biggest difference between the two, I think. Yeah, that'll be an exciting day. I definitely agree with your projections there. Do you think... um, you know, you know what I didn't hear this year? I didn't hear anything about uh, USB Type-C on the phones. No. I did hear that the – maybe it's the Pro or something comes – I don't remember which phones, but some amount of the phones come with uh, an 18-watt charger. Okay. Better. I believe. And I don't know if it – it might be the USB-C version. Right. Because they already made a USB-C 18-watt charger, I think, for an iPad. So yep. don't quote me on that. Um, actually, they have – well, do they have pages where they say, what's in the box? Because that's they usually a thing they might, say. might, but I'm not going to look for it. Yeah, let's see. I'm, I'm going to look for it. Um, do, 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 do. I'm clicking around. This is this is thrilling content right now, I can tell you that. It doesn't say. In the box, iPhone with iOS 13, ear pods, lightning to USB cable, USB power adapter, documentation. That's so generic. Eh. It's easier that way. Yeah. Well, one of the iPhones might have higher power. We'll see. Yeah. I think that this was a great announcement overall. I'm very pleased with the phone lineup. Um, Pretty pleased with the watch, even though I don't really care about watches. Uh, Nothing was bad here. Everything was fine. It was a good event. Yeah, it was pretty good. And I think it was was cool that the, the Apple Watch Series 5, like, no one knew anything about it. Like, that there was a compass or that the always-on display was coming. So yep. that was that was fun to have some surprise. Um, I think the the iPhone supply chain is is so large that we're gonna pretty much for the rest of time always hear about what major features are coming in the next right. one. 
Yep. Okay, well, that's perfect. Uh, so where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me on my website, brianm.me, or on a better place, uh, twitter.com slash brianmitchell. And, of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on Twitter at RandomR. And, of course, on my website, ryanrampersad.com. This episode and this series is licensed under Creative Commons. You can find the link to that somewhere, probably, I hope. Of course, you can leave comments for us and chat about this episode and other episodes of Nexus Specials on reddit.com at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. And you can even support Brian and I recording episodes just like this one at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. That's pretty much it. Well, with that... Uh, we'll we'll see you at uh, probably in October or maybe November Apple event that will likely be happening, right? I oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it to the end of the year if it doesn't happen. Yeah, 16 inch MacBook Pro. Woo-hoo. We'll see you there. Okay, see you then. Have a good one. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.